read that Jesus never mentioned the word grace not even once in the four gospels of all the teachings of Jesus in the four gospels he never mentioned the word grace not even once of all of Jesus is teaching in Matthew Mark Luke and John you will never find anywhere he mentioned the word grace and the reason why we're taking time to explain the four Gospels is to establish that the four Gospels must be read carefully because if you don't read the four Gospels carefully you can get into error just like the Old Testament you have to read the Old Testament carefully if you don't read it carefully you can get into error and in a few minutes I'm going to show you why I said some of these words I have just said so Jesus never mentioned grace, not even once in the Gospels. But the whole of the epistles are overwhelmed with the teaching of grace. All over the epistles, almost all the books begins with the grace of our Lord Jesus, ends with the grace of our Lord Jesus. Whole doctrinal teachings in the epistles that deals with grace. Whole doctrinal teachings all through the epistles. So we want to see why the, the word grace was never mentioned by Jesus in the Gospels but as it is written i have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god had prepared for those whom he loves you remember i taught you that so the book of first corinthians 2 9 was taken by apostle paul from isaiah 64 verse 4. it was not a coinage of brother paul he just took it as reference from the old testament and brought it into rightly divided reality in the epistles so he says eyes have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god had prepared for those whom he loves verse 10 but god hath revealed them unto us that them is not there god hath revealed unto us by his spirit for the spirit such at all things hear the deep things of god the reason why that dam is not there is because that dam does not have any meaning to be in that place and you will find out in a short while as we read on verse 11. for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god so the revelation there tells us that the spirit of god reveals god to us that the spirit of god reveals god to us verse 12. now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we may know the things that are freely given to us by god to know to know the key is to know in the old testament they didn't know god in the new testament they shall know me from the least to the greatest in the old testament they didn't have relationship with god it was god and servants in the new testament because i will be merciful to their unrighteousness their sins and iniquities i will remember or i will not hold them accountable i will be to them a god they shall be to me sons and daughters so in the new testament we have relationship between father and sons in the new testament we know god in the old testament they didn't know god and in the old testament they didn't have a vibrant relationship with god that is why he brought the second and took away the first that is why the new testament replaces the, the old testament that is why the new testament is the reality of the foreshadowing or the symbolic expression of the old testament so two key two very fundamental things number one relationship with god number two the revelation of god that we may know that we may know the deep things of God. Meaning that there are no more mysteries about God. Every mystery about God has been demystified in the New Testament. We know God. I thought somebody would shout, I know God. Can I hear you shout it very loud? I know God. All right. Please follow me very patiently. Verse 13. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned the natural man can't know but we know so the new covenant is the ministration of the spirit the old testament is the ministration of death please don't forget these two words 
the new covenant is a ministry of the spirit the old testament is a ministry of death or a ministration of death the later kill it the spirit give it life the old testament the ministry of death the law of the spirit of the law of sin and death the new testament the ministry of the spirit the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death please very important very very important now but jesus functioned under the old testament at the closing stages of it under the four gospels jesus functioned under the old testament matthew mark luke and john are a tra they are transitional books but the events happened under the old testament matthew mark luke and john are historical accounts of the incarnate christ when he functioned under the old testament so that is why in the epistles you will not see the apostles making reference to the teachings of christ you won't see that why were they not making reference to the teachings of jesus in the epistles we just read about two or three places where the apostles referred to just a few sentences that jesus spoke when he was on earth you will think that in the new testament in the book of acts and all the churches at ephesus galatia rome the churches in Th Th thessalonica the churches in philippi you will think that all of those churches every teaching that will be there was what jesus taught in the gospels but when you read you won't find any of Jesus' teachings in the gospels written or sent or ministered or taught to any of the new testament churches why because jesus himself placed a disclaimer on his teachings in the gospels and we shall find out why but let's see the disclaimer john 16 12 i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now hmm you cannot bear them now when he said i have yet many things what he's saying is the things that i have not said to you are much much more than what i have told you now this was the last public teaching ministry of jesus after spending all his time on earth the last day he's doing a public seminar he now says everything i wanted to say i have not said the greater part of my teachings i have not taught you many things i would have said but you cannot handle it every time i want to bring what i want to say to you you lack the capacity to take it so i have not said what i want to say this is the last public teaching because in chapter 17 of john was a high priestly prayer where jesus began to pray to the father that they may be one even as we are one after that prayer was death burial and resurrection so the last public teaching of jesus after teaching for 30, 30 32 and a half years he now says all this time i have been here i have not said what i want to say that's a disclaimer all he has said why couldn't he say what he wanted to say we shall find out in a few minutes just pay attention look at that scripture again john chapter 16 verse 12 i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now he didn't say i have many things to say to you but i don't want to say it he says you cannot bear them now so that means we have to carefully read what jesus said in the gospels can somebody shout hallelujah many things to say but you cannot bear them now and he was talking to his disciples verse 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all the truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come that means jesus didn't teach all the truth because he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all the truth that means all that i said does not contain all the truth it has some portions of truth but when the holy spirit is come he will now guide you into all the truth that i would have said but i couldn't say because you couldn't bear them 
if you are with me on the same page shout a good amen yeah when he the spirit of truth when he is come he will say to you what i wanted to say that i couldn't say to you so the holy spirit came to complete what jesus didn't do when he was here put up the next verse for me he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you all things that the father heart are mine therefore said i that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you so jesus emphatically said when the holy spirit comes his main assignment will, will be to take what is mine and show it to you that means what i would have told you but you cannot bear it when he the holy spirit is come he will take what i will have told you and he will still tell you meaning between now and when he will come something will change in you that will enable you understand which you cannot understand now are we on the same page now watch carefully you will understand right now thank you lord so because of what jesus said that is why the gospels do not qualify as new testament because in the new testament they shall know me they shall know me from the least to the greatest in the gospels not all the truth when the holy ghost comes he will guide you into all the truth he will take everything that is mine he will show it to you but he has to come first because right now even if i say you can't be it all right so meaning the people placed a limitation on what jesus could say to them the people restricted jesus as to what jesus was able to teach them so let's let's establish it doctrinally matthew 13 34 all these things spake jesus unto the multitudes how in parables in what in parables and without a parable spake he not unto them that means everything jesus said in matthew mark luke and john all were parables everything he said without a parable speaking not unto them so everything he said was a parable every teaching of jesus in matthew mark luke and john they were all parables parables yes parables verse 35 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying i will open my mouth in parables and i will utter things which had been kept secret from the foundation of the world i will open my mouth in parables so jesus says something very outstanding here that jesus's ministry was parable based so everything he said was parables in that matthew 13 35 he was quoting from psalm 78 verse 2. now look at verse 10 of matthew 13 and the disciples came and said unto him why speakest thou unto them in parables because every time jesus spoke it was always parable 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 everything he taught everything he said all through the four gospels was parable 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 every time he spoke out of his mouth came parables so the disciples cornered jesus and said to him why do you speak to them in parables look at the answer jesus gave he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know my disciples is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given i can't speak because they won't handle it to you my disciples is given to know because you're under my covering but to them these things are parables so parables are for those who don't have revelation parables are for those who don't have revelation when a man lacks revelation we communicate to him in parables it's like children in the nursery school you don't go to children in the nursery school and begin to say to them uh, uh, write down sociology nursery school no you don't even make heavy sentences for children in nursery school 
What do you do for children in nursery school? Parables. You draw an animal. This is a goat. Say it. This is a goat. Say it. The animal will be standing. This is a goat. This is a goat. They draw another one. This is popo. Popo. So they will see popo and popo. See the picture. You can't tell children, write down a goat is an animal. No. They won't handle it. They will just be looking at you. They lack capacity for that kind of sentence. Teaching good. That's why everybody doesn't teach nursery school children. There is specialized training for children. Why? Because the way you communicate with children is not the way you communicate with idol adults. They will lose everything you're with. You'll be wasting your time. There's a speciality in handling children and raising them up intelligently. There's a speciality required. Are we together here? It's just like there is specialized training for people who minister to handicapped children. Children who cannot hear. Children who cannot talk. There are people specially trained to train those children to become intelligent and to understand. Why? Because of their capacity. Why won't we just put all children together in the service and let somebody just come and be talking like I'm talking? They won't understand. It will be a waste of time. So there has to be specialized training for children. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are specialized books for amateur people. If you are not born again, then we will minister to you from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because those are parables to those without. Teaching good? Parables to who? To those without. Who are those without? Those that are not born again. If a man is not born again, he's without. And such a man cannot receive revelation. He cannot. You can't communicate spiritual things to natural people. They won't catch it. Natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. And in them, Jesus is talking about these people he spoke to in parables. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. So I'm speaking to them in parable because of the condition of their hearts. The reason why I cannot speak revelation to them is because of the condition of their hearts. Hallelujah. Number one, they have not believed the gospel. Hear, but they hear not. See, but they see not. Number two, they have not believed in Christ. So, because of that, he can only communicate to them in parables or symbols. What is a parable? A parable is the use of earthly things to explain spiritual or heavenly realities. Using earthly things to communicate spiritual realities. Using earthly examples, symbols, figures. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. So he said the problem is the state of their heart. So in Jesus' ministry, he spoke to them in parables. But that's not the church. Because in the church he says, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But as it is written, their eye have not seen, their ear have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those whom he loves. Next verse. But, I thought somebody would shout, but. But God hath revealed. God hath revealed. Them parables, us revelation them parables us god hath revealed them unto us how by his spirit how many of you have the holy ghost with your hand shot i have the spirit of revelation on my inside yeah god has revealed them to us by his spirit the spirit of revelation 
the spirit of adoption the spirit of his son oh glory to god so why parable because of the state of their hearts let me show you another one matthew 19 3 to 6 the pharisees also came unto him tempting him and saying unto him is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause and he answered and said unto them have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and he said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh he gave us that wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore god had joined together let no man put asunder next verse they say unto him why did moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away watch the answer watch the answer he said unto them moses because of the hardness of your hearts suffered you to put away your wives but from the beginning it was not so so the law was given because of the condition of men's hearts so jesus spoke parables because of the condition of the hearts of his hearers these were natural men these were people without these were people that were not ready to believe him or believe what he has to say but we we are not ordinary men we are regenerated by the holy spirit so because we have the holy spirit what jesus couldn't tell them he has told us by his spirit in the epistles please if you're following shout i hear you they couldn't handle it because of the hardness of their hearts it's not the communication that made their hearts like that it is their hearts that made the communication like that in luke chapter 8 verse 10 and he said unto them unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of god but to others in parables that seeing they might see and hearing they might not understand so kabaya they see by seeing but they will not understand why will they not understand because they are not part of the kingdom so now matthew 13 14 and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of isaiah which said by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand seeing you shall see and shall not perceive so parables expose the condition of men's hearts the parables are to expose the conditions of men's hearts but if you observe carefully one of the writers didn't use much parables his name was john john didn't use much parables why because john wrote the book of john close to revelation so while matthew mark and luke we are busy talking about a virgin and a boyfriend called joseph who were trying to get married and the virgin got pregnant and the angel said to joseph don't put her away she has a child of the holy ghost while all of them were busy giving you parables and bedtime stories when john showed up on the scene john spoke revelation in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was can you see the mode of communication john's mode of communication differs from matthew mark and luke because john had already gotten revelation before he wrote the book of john he cheated matthew mark and luke he cheated them because they just wrote what they saw john waited until he has encountered the Pauline teachings then john wrote the gospel of john the same week he wrote first second and third john that's why if you read carefully john 3 16 sounds like first john 3 16 because the books were written the same time so john wrote when he has gotten revelation that's why the mode of communication differed it's in john you will see i am come that you may have life it's in john you will see i give unto you eternal life no man can pluck you out of my hand my father that gave you to me is greater than all and no man can pluck you out of my father's hand. all that was john you will see john say in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world all those were polite um, they were they were john's revelations written in the gospels 
before it took effect in the epistles because john wrote john after he has acquired revelation so when people when the heart of men have not received christ we use parables when people have received christ we bring revelation and that's why you're hearing revelation here say i hear you that's what you're hearing you are not hearing parables here you are hearing there is no kindergarten class here every teaching you are hearing here requires a lot of thinking and concentrated attention you're not hearing this is a dog everybody repeat this is a dog you're not hearing that what you're hearing here are the deep things of god as revealed by the holy ghost if you're with me on the same page shout a powerful amen, amen. now so john wrote from hindsight and he wrote a lot about the last days of jesus now the key of all parables is in mark chapter 4 mark 4 13 the key of all the parables of jesus and he said unto them know ye not this parable and how then will you know all parables if you don't know this one how will you know all the parables that means this parable is the key to all the parables of jesus what is this parable verse 14 the sower soweth the world that's the key to all parables the sower soweth the world so the parable explains situations around the world that's why in that parable of the sower, some fell by the wayside, some fell among thorns, some fell on stony ground, and some fell on good ground. Conditions around people's hearts when they hear the gospel. Because that's what all the parables are about. Because the parables are a revelation of the condition of men's hearts. Teaching good. I say teaching good. Yeah. So Jesus used parable because the people in the audience were not believers for believers he never spoke in parables he always explained to his disciples privately after he has thrown parable to the audience bam when they come in he will call the disciples and say that thing i just said this is the revelation of what i just said to his people he gives revelation to outsiders he gives parables 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 i say parables i say parables that's why on christmas day here you will not hear me talk about baby in a manger you will hear me talk about jesus is god who became a man to save man that's revelation that's not parable at all you miss jesus you miss god that's not parables parables will be jesus was born in a manger and there was no room in the inn and because there was no room in the inn they born the baby in a manger maybe you too has been born in a manger you and jesus look alike those are parables my friend we are just trying to motivate and encourage you but when you begin to see that jesus is god who became a man that means his appearance in a manger was a mystery you'll be thinking he's a baby of mary but he is the creator of mary what are you talking about before mary was he has been in the beginning was the word shout revelation can i hear you shouting very loud now say i receive revelation I didn't hear your amen like a revelation amen parables and revelation so Jesus explains to us the meaning of all the parables so again like I said it is not safe to teach purely from the parables of Jesus because those parables we are we are communicated to people who didn't believe in christ and then they were revealed to believers in christ 
praise the lord for example one of the parables that the church world has celebrated over the years the church world now one of the parables is what the church world calls operation push you know push p-u-s-h you know the meaning of push pray until something happens now there's nothing wrong with pray until something happens what is wrong with prayer until something happens is where the inspiration was derived from that's what is wrong where did the church world get pray until something happens from one of the parables who are parables communicated to people who don't believe in jesus is it luke 18 1 if you have a good bible that's why the church world got pray until something happens operation push look 18 1 and he spake a parable unto them somebody say parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint okay there was in a city a judge somebody shall story story okay there was in a city a judge yeah. are you enjoying the story time which feared not god neither regarded man there was a widow in that city and she came unto him saying avenge me of my adversary and he will not for a while but afterward he said within himself though i fear not god nor regard man yet because this widow troubled me i will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me and the lord said hear what the unjust judge saith look at contrast somebody say contrast the book of luke is a book of contrast look at contrast and shall not god avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he be along with them so when people read this they conclude just like the woman troubled the king and the king could not rest until the king gave us something fire god let god not rest today 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 jesus must answer me today today have you been in that kind of church before today 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 jesus must answer me today who is fighting with jesus answering you pray until something happens you hear prayers like i will not leave you until you bless me hold god's leg People will pray and gyrate after all the prayer nothing is happening why ignorance my people are destroyed why do you think you have to harass god for god to answer you because they said from a parable all that is taken from a parable bedtime story but if you study the parable because in every parable there's a story there are fictions and there's a lesson there are facts there are fictions and there's a lesson instead of pursuing the lesson we get fascinated with the facts we get fascinated with the fiction nollywood you know nollywood so let's look at this there are characters to look at number one there's a widow are you a widow are you a widow so why do you think that parable is about you number two there's an unjust god judge is god unjust in genesis 18 the bible calls god a righteous judge so that parable is not about a believer and that parable has nothing to do with god then finally the judge say lest the woman weary me let me answer her when he that watched over israel does not sleep nor slumber you can't weary him so automatically that parable is kicked out but the question now is what is the lesson because that's what is important the the lesson there is she said avenge me of my adversary meaning the woman was asking the judge for justice defend me defend me and the unjust judge say well let me just do it so that this woman will not disturb me then he now used the opposite shall not god which is the contrast avenge his own very elect he said i tell you even before you pray and disturb him 
you will do it speedily meaning god on this side is not like the unjust judge on the other side on the other side you must trouble him before you answer you on this side before you call he will answer i don't know if i'm teaching here because he's a good god bible calls him the prayer answering god the prayer answering god the psalmist will say unto you that answered prayer shall all flesh come so automatically that takes care of operation push then there's another contrast in luke 11 5 put it up and he said unto you which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves at midnight for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me friend 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 and i have nothing to set before him and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give thee i say unto you look at the contrast though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needed next verse and i say unto you ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that accepts receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Next verse. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? So a friend, a friend, a friend. And the friend say, I'm in bed. I don't want you to trouble me. I don't want you to disturb me. But because you are under pressure, I'll just give you. Then he said, if a friend, no matter what, will be that kind to a friend, how much more God? How much more God? God is not your friend. Who is God? This is friend, friend, friend. Then you and God, who is your father? So the parables try to bring people to a place of understanding relationship. Faith in God. The mission of the parables was to bring these unbelievers to a place of faith in God. Then in that Luke chapter 18 verse 8, you will see what Jesus said to them. Luke 18 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? What he was simply saying is that if the Son of Man reveals to people what he has done for them on the cross will they have the confidence to believe it will they believe if god says you are righteous can you believe that you are righteous do you have faith in what christ has done because his contrast is dealing with the parables are earthly illustrations used to try to communicate spiritual realities and that faith on the earth does not even affect us because first of all faith has been given to us by the gospel romans 10 17 galatians 2 20 i live by the faith of the son of god the believer does not need faith the believer is in faith are you with me here if you're with me shout a good amen so a few things to think about religion says don't ask god questions Huh? Uh, and most times you will see religion in display when either somebody dies somebody dies why why god why then you hear religious people don't ask god questions god does what pleases him so the impression is this god must be wicked i'm living with my husband and we're happy then god just stand up give my husband cancer takes him away and leaves me sad what kind of god is that that will take away my only son that is the hope of my life my husband died everything i've lost only this son i have and now the, the son is dead what kind of god is that or a god that will take away a man's wife religion gives you an impression that god just does whatever he wants when he wants he can even take away your 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 your, your eyes make you blind this god 
if he knows you will like you will, you will commit too much fornication he will take away your eyes so that you cannot see woman have you had people say such things when they say blind man they say only god knows what this man will have done if he had eyes religion is wicked religion is very wicked religion says don't ask god question if really god doesn't want to be asked questions honey when jesus was on earth and the disciples asked him question he will have landed them a slap Pwah! how dare you ask god question don't you know i am god how dare you ask me question but look at god when they asked him he sat down and explained that means god wants you to ask him questions didn't he say come let us reason together so if something happens tell god come come Oga, come come baba come sit down sit down i have some things to clear why did this happen and if you are serious about your question he will give you answers if he doesn't answer you at that time after a while maybe from the pulpit as i'm teaching i will open scripture bam you will see the answer god wants to answer all your questions even now as i'm teaching some of your questions are getting answered is that true god is not god is not boxing a religion religion is a make-believe god is your father how many of you don't ask your father questions how many of you ask your father questions and they beat you no father will do that no father i remember years back when just when jail my little girl well she was in school and then I, I visited her in school with her mother and then we we're driving and the girl just said to me daddy i said yes yes baby why don't we have superman powers i said what he said why don't we have superman powers so the mother explained to me that what she's saying is you know there is batman is it batman or catman there is batman and which other one spider-man cool man you know spider-man he's superman if you look for spider-man's trouble he will land on the roof of your house open the roof and enter and take care of you and when he finished taking care of you if police are coming the guy is going why are you looking at me as if you don't watch it me i don't even watch it i know you like jackie chan too much i didn't slap her how dare you ask me question no no father behaves like that god is your father immediately she asked me i calm down because now i know there's an issue here and if i don't settle this child this child can be lured into magic because magicians have superman operations true or false have you seen magicians before they will remove their neck keep it on the ground and walk with their neck magicians then they will come back carry the neck and put it back you never see magic when i was small i used to attend magical shows fires i used to like magical shows and they used to do a few of them around my nursery in primary school so when they are doing magic we'll go and sit down and be watching the man will just be doing all kinds of things he will carry fire fire put it in his mouth and be chop and be eating fire in my mind i'm like one day when i grow me to start eating fire one day i got to my house and i wanted to eat fire i taught the team because i have watched and watched and watched i thought now i have the same power like the man to eat fire when i touch the fire the fire touched me i took off i didn't even carry to put in my mouth just the attempt the fire told me you should get size so i have to come out down and say okay now listen those things you see operate they are not superman powers they are make-believe they are shows they are actings but as believers we have our own superman powers i said to her the superman power we have is called born again number two holy ghost then i began to explain to her how miracles happen how we lay hands on sick people and they recover how we cast out demons and how we speak to situations and miracles happen and then we reminded her a few instances in the family where we have spoken and things happen like that they just happened and then we said you may say yeah i said that is superman power that's our own superman power are you here do you have superman powers yeah. where is your own is inside you what is the name of your superman power 
Holy Ghost. I didn't slap and say, shut up. How dare you ask your father a question? So your father in heaven wants to answer your question. So if something happens and you don't understand, tell God, Father, I need understanding. Father, show me from your word. And if I'm not able to see it, use somebody to, I want to have answers. God will answer your questions. God will answer your questions. So God is not one mystery somewhere where people tell you, don't worry. What's gonna be is gonna be. So religion says, don't ask God questions. Religion says, everything is the will of God. That's what religion says. Everything is the will of God. A young man walks to you and says, sister, I want to marry you. Two of you agree. You start walking out. You start going out. You start seeing each other. And you start talking about marriage. Then suddenly say, I don't want you again. You start crying. The will of God be done. It's no will of God. Maybe the way you ate the last time two of you went out. He was afraid that in his house he will finish his food. I'm not talking about you. Ah, some sisters are like fire. There's a sister that used to follow me to go and preach. So one day as we we're going to preach, I told her let's enter the uh, uh, supermarket. When we enter, I say, pick anything you like. Ah, I don't enter Wahala. I know one Mariamo. We are going to preach. She was not anything me. I have never told her I love you. Not even by mistake. Not even will you marry me. Not even can we know nothing. Straight official operation. We are going for crusade. But as the man of God, I have to take care of people in my camp. Pick something. Pick whatever. Uh -uh. Me, I have carried one small snack with one small juice. And I'm going to the counter to pay. I see her basket is full. <laughs> Meanwhile, even if they sell my leg, it will not pay for that basket. You are not hearing something. <laughs> I walked around and said, I don't have money for these things. Oh. You better drop them. I know them. I, 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 I was saying you should carry something small that you can eat. I don't have that money. So she dropped everything. When we left, I said, Say, even if by mistake, God said I should marry this one. Never. Never. Not even in a billion one. I can't marry this one. Will devour me. This is devourer. Sometimes when brothers say no to sisters, it's one habit. Maybe something happens, you come charge. The brother says, Sir, this one can beat me. Sister, my mama said, Make I no marry you. It's my mother. Me, I want to marry you. Oh, I wish God can touch my mother. It's a lie. His mother is a cover up. He doesn't want slap. Because the way you look, you can slap. Leave that side. So religion says, Everything is the will of God. Oh, you're a brother, you approach a sister. Let me balance this. let me balance it you are a brother you approach a sister and then as you are talking to the sister you casually did and on your armpit is the map of benue state a <laughs> sister will say bro my papa say if he see me with you again he would disown me i don't want to be disowned no vex you here now lie papa na cover up now your armpit driver then you now say it's the will of God. What's gonna be is gonna be. What goes up? Who gave you that song? Religion is wicked. But we have revelation. Somebody shout, we are the revelation generation. Yeah, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. That's number two. Number one, religion says don't ask questions. Number two, religion says everything that happens is the will of God. Number three. Religion says God makes evil and good to happen. That it is God. I will show you in a few minutes. Then finally, the one that even is worst is when they say, it's God that permitted it. God permitted. God permitted your wife to die. Eh? God permitted your husband to have cancer. God permitted that means when they when when the witches and wizards ask god how far god say you can touch him small huh? god religion is wicked 
As your amen will come like thunder, you will know this God in greater dimension. Yeah. Satan will never cheat you in this life. Yeah. If your amen is louder, enjoy the goodness of God. Yeah. Now, pay attention as I begin to. Are you glad you came this afternoon? This is how to understand basically. In Romans 5 12 he now tells us something that will help us with this wherefore as by one man sin by who talk to me power city who one man sin entered into the world and death by sin where did death come from from sin where did sin come from from man so man sin death are we together here Genesis 2 16 and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die so God gives man a freedom to choose and then God says that one kills this one if you eat you have life but the choice is yours so man went and made the choice for death god is not involved god only points man to life and he warns man of death but if man disobeys god and decides to go ahead and disobey and take what god told him had death it's not god that gave him the death it's his choice that brought death into his life so you can't blame god for most in fact all the things that happens to people in this life you can't blame God for why somebody is sick. You can't blame God for why did somebody die at the age of 15. You can't blame God. Choices, carelessness. You can't blame God for why a sister is not married. Carelessness, choices, illiteracy. What do I mean by illiteracy? Illiteracy. When they tell a sister that if you dream and see yourself marrying the dream your spiritual husband and she believes it that's illiteracy spirits don't marry spirits don't marry so how can you have a spiritual husband the bible says spirits don't marry i don't know where that village teaching came from spirits don't marry spirits are like angels demons and evil spirits are fallen angels they are spiritual entities spirits don't marry so how can you have a spiritual husband from where and because they have told you in your mind you have accepted that you have a spiritual husband then what is the next thing desperation and what will desperation bring looking for deliverance you start moving around looking for deliverance and then they will use you as guinea pig to be doing experiment and they'll be using you to tell people that there is power because every time they do share you yeah, 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 yeah. you want to confirm that truly you have spirit husband so that the man of god will look for higher powers to free you you will roll on the floor break all their chairs and then you say i'm born again but there are ladies and guys who are not born again and they are marrying without prayer you you are born again but spirit husband stop you unbeliever that is not born again spirit husband did not stop him how are you thinking are you doing addition by subtraction one two three four five then you come six one two three four five six seven you went forward five you came back seven addition by subtraction so again man's choices man's will determines the outcome of his life as so simple as that man's choices man's choices man's choices when i was growing up the person i wanted to marry some time back i saw the person and i was grateful i didn't marry her very grateful I looked at her again and I asked myself, what was I seeing? Thank you, Lord. So some of you, when a sister says no, it's a miracle. 
And some of you, when a brother say, my father say is a miracle. Because maybe you're too much for that person. Why are you looking at me like that? Teaching me the word of God. So I could have made a choice for somebody that wouldn't have been mama to marry me. Maybe me and that person now will have been in one village doing village evangelism. Somewhere. Just maybe. I didn't say I would. I'm just saying maybe. Because choices, whether whichever choice you make will determine the outcome of your life. Anyhow you make it. Teaching good. Maybe after I'm married, I should have said, follow me to my village. I just want us to have a church in my village. I cannot survive city life. And because of too much trouble, I'll carry my box and follow her. And then we will do you want ministry in the village. You power city, you won't have papa. You say you no know, run. <laughs> well, I'll be eating fresh fish and crayfish. I will not think of world evangelism. Why are you laughing like that? It's not me that said all right, now you talk to all <laughs> Glory to God. I prophesy to the first 500 of you whose amen will come like thunder. You are guided in your choices. You will make right choices. You will make right choices. Ah, you will make right choices. Some of you that have made wrong choices, mercy is rewriting your destiny rewriting your story and rewriting your situation if your amen is louder receive it by grace see that let me tell you something there was one lady that used to come around our house we were asked her to cook every food in the kitchen will finish if she wants to cook all the maggi all the onions everything will finish one cooking so I, I told my friend, I said, this girl is a devourer. <laughs> and the Bible said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That's how we banned her from coming to our house. We banned her. We said, don't come again. God bless you. Because somebody like you will ruin somebody. You will move me to a poor man. choices am i blessing somebody the day you eat you shall die it's not god that said die god just showed them something from a compassionate heart and as a loving father he's warning them of something that has a negative repercussion you can't blame god for that he's already played his merciful part if i'm teaching good shout a good amen i'm not hearing your amen somebody Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. James 1 13 look at it clearly let no man say when he's tempted I'm tempted of God let no man I love brother James he clears it for us let no man say when he is tempted I'm tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man turn to your neighbor and say God can never tempt you tell your neighbor tell your neighbor tell, say neighbor neighbor God can never tempt you. God does not tempt. Then look at the next verse. He now tells us where temptation comes from. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Next verse. Then when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death so it begins with man's choice next verse says do not err my beloved brethren don't get into error every good and perfect gift verse 17 cometh from above nothing bad from god only good things come from god god is not the source of evil god is not even the source of temptation he doesn't tempt anybody but good and perfect gifts they come from god hallelujah so temptation is a function of man's free will and sin is a function of man's desire the tempter of sin is the devil 
can't you see that even satan came to tempt jesus in the wilderness he came to jesus to tempt him so that you know who the tempter is and that's the first time satan is unveiled the first unveiling of satan was the temptation of jesus the first time we know who the tempter is because if jesus is the tempter satan won't tempt him he will tempt satan but because satan is a tempter satan is even tempting god so that establishes every temptation in life is from satan because god can never tempt anybody so this is the first time in matthew chapter 4 that we see satan unveiled in the temptation of christ that satan is the source of all temptation for the first time he came to jesus three times and he begins to cast aspersions on the world like he did to eve he was casting his passions on, on the world he said it is also written he was casting his passions and when you don't understand the word you operate in darkness when you don't understand the word of god satan will just take one little verse and use that verse to lock you up you operate in darkness lack of understanding keeps you in darkness and if you read the books of moses you will never see moses mention satan not even one he mentioned serpent serpent because he was ignorant so in john 8 44 jesus now unveils who the serpent was you have your father the devil and the loss of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it so jesus unveiled satan to us in john 8 44 that satan is the liar and satan is the one responsible for evil in the book of revelation john the beloved called satan the dragon the old serpent the dragon the old serpent in second corinthians 11 brother paul will say lest the devil should tempt you like he tempted eve in the new testament the serpent is called satan moses didn't know the difference that's why the old testament is a progression of revelation the epistles unveil satan to us because the epistles reveal god to us in james 4 7 he said your adversary the devil goeth about like a roaring lion in first peter chapter 5 verse 8 be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour then look at the next verse whom resisted fast in the faith just a resistance will put the devil on the run hallelujah so you won't find such statements in the old testament you won't find because the old testament the devil was not known so the devil was hiding under cover and carrying out all manner of havocs and evil against people but first john chapter 1 verse 5 whoa somebody bless shall bless this then is the message somebody said we have a message mm. not messages this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all so let me ask you who is behind cancer who is behind high blood pressure who is behind blocked tubes who is behind infertility who is behind death so when you see a brother begin to go to the hospital today the doctors will say is this one tomorrow the doctors will say is this one next tomorrow they will say stop the medication start this one after tomorrow they say stop this one they are using you for experiment leave the doctors enter the room lock the door maluka to boloto beberike to nakata na menge resist the devil and he will walk don't let the devil use you for experiment you have authority say i have authority say it very loud louder loudest loud loudest somebody say i have authority over satan jesus's authority is my authority say i resist the devil he flees from me 
I thought somebody would stand up and shout a thunderous amen. amen. Who is responsible for evil? Who is behind temptation? It's the devil. Stand on your feet, we're done. Are you blessed? Yeah, we're done with this service. This is the message that God is light and in him is no darkness no atom of darkness jesus said i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life oh, yeah, 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 yeah. he said and the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it who is light jesus and who are you your light are you in him what are you you are the light of the world what happens to darkness when light appears it flees i prophesy over you today throughout the course of 2018 darkness will flee before your face the one whose amen is louder darkness will flee before your face your appearance will shut down darkness whatever resembles darkness i command it to be aborted i declare it abolished i declare it cancelled every unfruitful work of darkness parading itself around you as your amen will come like thunder we resist darkness we resist sickness we resist poverty look at me for a minute let me ask you a question who is behind poverty huh? primarily is satan secondarily is laziness don't blame satan for all in fact if you work hard satan will not come you didn't hear me i want to pray you didn't hear me if you work hard satan will not come that's why unbelievers who don't have authority who are giving to work they have money who understand the world system they have money of course satan is a source of all evil including poverty but poverty only comes to a lazy man that's what the bible says a little sleep a little slumber so shall your poverty not our poverty he says so shall your poverty come with ak-47 <laughs> he will come like an armed man that means poverty will carry ak-47 and enter your house just a little sleep a little slumber instead of you to go and get some job somewhere and do he said no you know i read petroleum engineering i can only work with mobile or share lng outside that i will not do anything ak-47 poverty will use it to come to your house yeah you read for lng and you read for petroleum but how many petroleums are around if you don't find refinery what your hand find it to do do it my friend it's not the job it's the blessing you can sell sand and be the richest man in africa who am i talking to in this building 2018 take charge of your world i'm not telling you amen at thunder i said take charge of your world possess your possession take over your inheritance somebody shout i reject poverty say it three times with the holy anger two three say i resist poverty say every poverty character i push it out of my house i didn't hear your amen you have a car and your family is starving you two are starving. Do kabu kabu. Carry the messages. Clean it. Itamanua. Itamanua. You know Itamanua? Where is Itam? There. Where is Anua? There. My brain is calculating. <laughs> Enter that Mercedes. E class or C class or F class. <laughs> So that the C class will not become F9 class. <laughs> Carry that message, put it on Itamanua. Itamanua. 
start driving before the day is over no matter what bad business at least you will go home with something your children will eat you too will eat and you will pray with a smile you know when people are hungry they pray with a frowning face father This is 2018. Your hand will engage industry. Somebody shout poverty. I resist you. In the name of Jesus. There are brains in this church. There are brains. There are brains all over this place. I command opportunities to avail to you. I'm not hearing that. Amen. This year you will give to the poor. You will build houses. This year you will buy cars. This year you will travel abroad for business. If your amen is louder, favor is calling your name. 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 Open your two hands. I command creativity in your hands. Receive creativity. Receive ideas. Receive concepts. This year, 2018, you will function in multiple streams of income. Multiple streams of income. Multiple streams of income. I see businesses, two business, four business, five businesses. This year, favor is working on your behalf. If your amen is louder, receive it by grace. What are the three things God told us to function with this year? Number one, increase in the knowledge of Christ. Number two, make, 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 receive power. I said, receive power battle 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 i say receive direction your steps are ordered your going out is blessed anywhere you enter money will call your name if that amen is louder is working for you already it's 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 working for you already as your pastor and your spiritual father i stand on this exalted altar i look into your life right now i speak the blessing of a father over your life be blessed be blessed be blessed be blessed be blessed, be blessed. what you couldn't do in 2017 you will achieve it before march is over the achievement of one year you will get it in one month the achievement of 10 years you will produce it in three months ah i decree and declare i decree and declare you will know where to enter you will know what to say and you will know what to do if your amen is louder the blessing is upon you it is well with you it is well with you throughout this day you will be healthy and strong healthy and strong you will not miss business opportunities the moment the opportunity appear you will know what to do in the name of jesus grace abounds grace abounds somebody shout grace abounds five times two three four five where are the money makers this year welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back i believe so much has happened already i want to encourage you if you have questions in the course of learning write them down somewhere and wait don't be in a hurry just write your questions somewhere in your notebook and wait as we keep teaching wait till about the 15th day of learning if your questions are not yet answered then email the